What's up, Glorify fam? Welcome to the very first Hope Talk. And today I want to be talking to you about seven steps to overcome fear and anxiety. Well, the reason why I'm talking about this certain topic is because it's deeply a part of my testimony. Never in my life have I ever experienced anxiety before. Sure, I experienced like fear and stress and worry, but never to the point of anxiety. That is, until about a year and a half ago. It was like it was deep down in my soul and under just the right circumstances, it finally boiled up and surfaced. But in the midst of that, the Lord has been refining and purifying in my heart and mind. And I believe that I'm becoming stronger in my body, in my soul, and in my spirit than ever before. I still have some battles that come and go, but now I know how to fight it. And I wanna share with you the weapons that I use whenever the battle of fear and anxiety arises. So numero uno, the first thing you gotta do is shift your focus. I admire your focus. Ah! Isaiah 26, three says, he will keep thee in perfect peace, all whose mind is stayed on thee. If we focus on a problem, it grows. But if we focus on the Lord, on His love, on His grace, on His power, on His glory, on His might, our problems grow so small, we can hardly see them. So the first things we have to do is shift our focus off of the things we're fearful or anxious about and shift it to God. That means we gotta blast that, this is how we fight our battles. Blast that worship music on, get in His Word, fill your heart and mind with this truth and promises over you. And most importantly, pray, pray, pray. Uh, Paul says in the book of, of Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Him. My homeboy Craig Grishal says this and it's so good. He says, prayer and praise is the pathway to peace. So whenever you start to feel anxious, get your mind off of the problem, get on your knees and give it to God. Cast all your cares to Him for He cares for you and just praise Him, praise Him in the midst of it all. So the second thing you gotta do is remember. Have you ever had someone tell you while you're in the middle of battling anxiety, just trust God. And all you want to do is yell in their face and say, I'm trying, I'm trying, okay? Ah, I'm trying, I'm trying. Ah. Well, let me tell you a little secret. The key to trusting is remembering. One of humanity's greatest downfalls is forgetfulness. That's why you see all over the Bible, the command to remember. To the Israelites, he says, remember the miracles God has done. Don't forget how he delivered you out of the oppressor's hands. For me personally, my trust bucket gets filled up and overflows once I take the time to be still and remember God's goodness and His faithfulness in my life. That's why it's so good to keep a journal and write down answered prayers or past triumphs. It builds up your faith and it strengthens your spirit. Another key to this is taking communion. Jesus said at the Last Supper to His disciples, do this in remembrance of me. Take communion and remember all that Jesus did for you. And that reminds you of the truth that if He loves you enough to die for you, how much more will He take care of you and work all things together for your good? Let His love be perfected in you, for perfect love casts out all fear. And remember that He is sovereign and He is so big and so great. He holds the galaxies in the palms of His hands, and He holds all matter and atoms together by His Word. In my own personal testimony, I had to learn to give up control. A few years ago, I experienced a tragic moment when my precious little doggie, her name was Gracie, um, got hit and run over by a car right in front of me. It was a hard thing to go through, and it left me with a serious control issue. I felt like I needed to control all of my loved ones' lives so they wouldn't get hurt. I learned really soon that that's a recipe for anxiety because deep down, you know that you cannot control that. I had pride in my heart because I felt like I could handle it all and I didn't need to give it to God. Just look at the middle letter in anxiety. It's the letter I. When we're trying to do things on our own strength and carry the burden of control, that leads to anxiety. I had to learn to surrender and give the control back to God over my life and over my loved ones' lives too. 
Jesus told us not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. The key is that we need to surrender it to God. Surrender brings freedom from fear and anxiety. Remember that we are only lambs and He is the shepherd and He can do a lot better at maintaining control than we can. So just cast your cares and anxious thoughts on Him for He cares for you. Remember Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So the fourth thing we ought to do is just laugh at the future. In Proverbs 31, it says that she laughs without fear of the future. The enemy will try to get you to fear about the unknown. What will the economy look like? Will I get my job back? How will I be able to go through life with this anxiety? You have to remember that God already goes before you. He's in the future already, like Doc and Marty in Back to the Future. You've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. He has it in his hands. And we just have to trust Him that He's going to work all things together for good. And He knows the plans that He has for you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. We have to remember that we are children of God and that we go from glory to glory. That means we are being transformed into His likeness day by day. You're getting stronger by these trials in your body, in your mind, and in your spirit. Paul says the testing of your faith produces perseverance and character and hope and let patience have its perfect work in you so that you may be mature and complete, lacking no good thing. The fifth thing you got to do, and this is so, so important, is to spell the lies with truth. The devil's target is your mind and his weapons is his lies. Especially during this pandemic, the enemy will try to plague your thoughts with fear of death and suffering. As Christians, we have nothing to fear because all we do is win, win, win. Counter those lies and thoughts with truth. If I get sick and suffer, I receive a crown of life in heaven. Or if I get sick and miraculously recover, the glory will go to the Lord and the miracle will cause others to get saved. Or even if I get sick and die, then the greatest blessing ever happens that I get to be with Jesus in heaven. For to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So all I do is win, win, win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. So stick that truth in the enemy's face and he'll have no more ammo to throw at you. Fear says, what if? But faith says, even if. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the story in Daniel 3, they told the king that if they get thrown in the fiery furnace, they know that God will save them. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. And look what happened. The miracle of them not being harmed and Jesus being right there in the fire with them caused the king and the whole kingdom to worship the one and true God. So the sixth thing you gotta do is submit to God and resist the devil. There's a great harvest happening right now where many people are open and ready to receive the gospel. And what I see the enemy is trying to do is get Christians, the ambassadors of the gospel, to get stuck and paralyzed with fear. You see, the enemy works by trial and error. If he sees that he can paralyze you in one area of your life, he'll keep using it over and over again. So what you have to do is take a stand and declare over your life that the enemy has no more stronghold by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. In James 4, 7, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Jamie's dad is Turbo Man. Let's get out of here. Once you realize this truth, the enemy's tactics actually backfires on him. For the thing that he's filling you with fear of is the very thing that you know he's trying to keep you from, and you should go and do it. He ain't the brightest bulb in the box. <laughs> and the seventh thing, the very last thing, and it's so, so important, you guys, is to encourage others. Anxiety comes when you're, we are too self-focused on ourselves. So if you want to take the focus off of yourself, then encourage other people around you. You'll find the reverse effect actually happens when you encourage somebody else. You yourself end up getting encouraged and uplifted. So I challenge you this week, Text or call five people and just share a Bible verse with them or encourage them and commit to pray for them. 
The more you help and encourage others, the more your eyes get off of yourself and the more the spirit of fear is lifted. So if any of you are struggling with fear and anxiety, remember these seven things. Shift your focus. Remember, give up control. Laugh at the future. Dispel the lies with truth. Submit to God, resist the enemy, and encourage others around you. And if you're watching this right now and you want not only the peace of God, but peace with God, and you want to receive Jesus into your heart, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me out loud right now. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Jesus, save me. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit so I can follow you, walk with you, and live for you. My life is not my own. I give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, please send us a DM. We would love to connect you with resources to help you in your walk with the Lord. And I hope this talk encourages you all to have hope and be fearless. Love y'all.